Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and be sure to ring that bell to stay up to date with any new videos. But uh, while we're talking about Fire and Blood, one of the important characters in Fire and Blood is uh, Calaris Valerion. Mm. And there are rumors that they might be casting uh, our first main black actor oh. uh, for Calari as Calaris Valerion. Um, once again, for those of you who don't remember, if you're not keeping up with our Fire and Blood podcast, uh, Calaris Valerion, also known as the Sea Snake, and I would say he's a fairly important character. He later becomes Rainier's Hand. He's the husband of Rainies, the queen that never was, and father to um, Iron Throne contender Lenor Valerion. Yes. And I gotta say, I'm a little eh on this casting, if it turns out to be true. Mainly because I feel like it's it's very lazy on their end to switch up a character's ethnicity, rather than coming up with new, interesting characters and putting them in the forefront. It seems lazy and a, a little disingenuous. Well, so they... Um... So there is some precedent in the sense that uh, uh, they made Salador San black. And Salador and, San... And uh, was... Zaro Zondaxos. Yeah. Well, Zaro, Zaro, you know, Zaro is Carthene, and the Carthenes are, like, super pale. But the Lyseni are supposed to be uh, of Valyrian descent, and they made Salador San um, uh, black. And so, you know, to make, to make uh, Valarians black... I mean, you know, who is to say, who is to say that uh, <laughs> that the Valyrian society wasn't multi-ethnic? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not that I mind it. It's just you know, I wonder if they're doing it because the actor is a great actor, mm. or if they're pandering. Because we had the whole thing. Uh, we did a a, 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 a Star Wars uh, podcast thing a while ago, and Preston made very good points. Uh, Hollywood doesn't do things like this because they want to, you know, give uh, certain right. people. No, I mean, I'd say that like all Hollywood is all pander. When you're like, oh, they're pandering, it's all pander. Like they're trying to give people what they want. They're they're trying to market, you know. Like of course, like you know, they they don't want to sit there and go, oh fuck, like Game of Thrones is such a white show. No, they want to throw in some black characters because they think if you throw in some black characters, black people will watch it, and you know. Based on studies, I'm sh I, I think that's true. Like, you know, like my my wife is not white, and when I, when I, when a when a show comes out that is related to her background, she she wants to watch it. Um, and so, and maybe you know, for everybody sitting at home going, well, I don't do that. Well, I mean, you might do it on a subconscious level. Like, we we as like, you know, white European descent people are obsessed with knights you know, from European history. Well, why aren't we so obsessed with samurai? Because, you know, I spent... I am. Right, but I spent some time in Japan, and they are obsessed with samurai, and I spent some time in China, and they, they're they definitely obsessed with, like, this whole, like, Tang Dynasty warrior, um, you know, kind of kind of background. So, mm. like, people are, people are interested, generally, in their own background and history. It sounds racist, but that's kind of the way things are like people are interested in themselves and they're interested in their own history and their own background so i don't think it's racist to be interested in like what you're interested in i, I yeah. love you know uh samurais the feudal the warring uh the, the warring feudal era from uh, japan and i love the romance of the three kingdoms in china that stuff is entertaining to me so i, I love stuff like that don't see but you're advice. you're a very you're an international guy who who you know is into all sorts of different type of media and but you know so, you know, that's good. That's good on you. I'm super interested in this stuff, too. When you told me, like, that one of the Marvel things was going to be about West African witches, I was like, that's the thing I'm most interested in. That sounds mm -hmm. fascinating. Um, though it turns out it's animated, I think. But, oh, is it? Yeah, oh. no, it's too bad. <laughs> but, <laughs> I didn't know that. Okay. But like, for but but I have to say that like I'm not like most people. Most people want you know things about themselves. So. You know, but the one thing, if they're gonna make Calaris Valerian a black guy, the one thing I will say is let's not have a situation like we have with John Boyega and Finn, because all Finn was relegated to doing in the Star Wars sequels was yelling "Ray," mm -hmm. and that's it. That's all he did. So if you're gonna actually, you know, make this casting choice, give the character something to do. Yeah. I wouldn't mind if they went a little bit above and beyond what he did in the books. You know, that's fine, but give the actor and the character actually something to do. Yeah. 
uh, instead of just making him a black guy and that's it and he does nothing. He just stands in the background like Ariel Hota. Like Ariel yeah. Hota, they made him black too, right? And he just stood there. He got to use his axe once, kind of, not really. Yeah. Now, I'm tra- the only situation where it really makes like a, a, a plot difference like is Corlys Velaryon is perhaps the father of one of the dragon seeds that... Nettles? No, um, Adam of Hull. Mm. And so, like, one of the dragon seeds is supposed to be, you know, his bastard. Um, and we don't, we don't know if that means Valarians have dragon riding genes or if it was from the mother or whatever. But, Ad, you know, Adam of Hull has the ability to ride dragons. We're not sure how, but he's supposed to be... It's rumored that he's Corlys Valarian's bastard. Um, we don't know for sure if he's the bastard. We're not sure if he gets his abilities from his mother, who you know is a is you know a local or what. But or if Corlys has the special gene in his family because he's a Valarian, and Valarians are pretty close to Targaryens have been and have been intermarrying with them for generations. So, you know, there's that. But um, have you seen Bridgerton or heard about Bridgerton? I, um, a, like, a, a bunch of the people I know and, and hang out with have been telling me, like, I need to go watch this. It's, it's interesting because they just decided to cast multi-ethnic with no explanation to it at all. Like, it's, it's period. It's period piece. And just, but randomly, there's just, like, black people, Asian people, you know, at court. And, and it's never brought up. It's never brought up. No. <laughs> not at all. Yeah. In fact, the, the main, the main um, protagonist female uh, marries a, a black guy. And, like, it's, it, it's like a big plot. Like, he's, you know, he's, like, the main protagonist guy, and she's the main protagonist girl. And it's just, it's just not brought up. They just, it's kind of like when you go to school, a school play, and it's just, you know, the cast can be multi-ethnic, and we're just never going to talk about it, you know? <laughs> when, by the way, when I was in middle school, they, they cast a white guy as as Martin Luther King in, in the in the Martin Luther King. You're, you're not. You're, are you serious? Yeah. Well, they they had three different kid three different kids play him over different periods of his life, and so they got they got two black kids to play him for like young and 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 like you know very young and, and somewhat young Martin Luther King, but then like for for old Martin Luther King, they got a white guy. Yeah. But there weren't enough black kids in this school. <laughs> I, I expected them to uh, hire more black actors because that's one of the main criticisms people lobbied at Game of Thrones for its ten-year run is that it was an all-white cast. I mean, yeah, I mean that that was George's book, and they tried to stay as faithful as to it as possible in the early uh, seasons. Yeah, but like I say, like uh, had they made the Starks black, like to start with, totally would have been fine with that. Like, oh, the first men were were black, cool. Like, why not? You know? Eh, but I, I expect them to, to cast Nettles in there, and I, I, I expect her, her role to be bigger, because, you know, Nettles is a uh, yes. uh, darker tone. And to what I was saying before, and I think you touched on it as well, um, it just seems like pandering, which is a shame, because I, I think they have a shot here to finally give the audience an interesting original character that could serve as our, our main lead, who is the everyman or woman. Because in Game of Thrones, we we never really had that everyman, fish-out-of-water type character. Because, like, Ned Stark kind of serves as that, but not really. Because he knows everyone. He's he's met them before. And when I talk about, like, the fish-out-of-water characters, I mean, you know, like, Sarah Connor or Luke Skywalker or Dorothy from Wizard of Oz. You know, like, everyday normal people who are thrust into this, like, weird and insane situation. And as they learn about the world and who these people are, we learn. You know, so like I don't I don't mind them casting this character as someone who like isn't white, but it does seem like a lazy attempt to appease people who have been wanting something like this. But hopefully, you know, it, everything works out. But um, no, so that's the rumor, and the other rumor was also with the same character. Uh, he's they're going to retain the the purple eyes. Okay. So that that's the other rumor, and we've seen it done in Witcher. It was fine. 
with um, uh, Anna Chilotra, who played Yennefer. Yeah, yeah. Look, it looked fine on her. It fine. I, I didn't mind it. But apparently, according to Dave and Dan back in season one, the reason they didn't do the contact lenses for Amelia Clark is because it looked weird on camera. I think it's because they probably would have had to pay her extra, and maybe it was hurting her eyes or whatever. Uh, I, I have heard I have heard stories that those that those contacts can just cause irritation, you know, and and um, yeah. That. Well, we have technology now to where I guess they could color it in post mm. post editing. So, but no. Well, so hopefully that... it looks better than like David Lynch's Dune. <laughs> what do you mean with David Lynch's Dune? So David Lynch's Dune, they they like color everybody's eyes like this glowing blue, you know. <laughs> really, they did that? Yeah. Well, actually, they did it for uh, the sci-fi miniseries as well, which is funny because in the book, like, so in Dune, like, if you if you live on Arrakis long enough, like. You, the, the exposure to the spice makes your eyes blue, but mm. so they ma- in both like David Lynch's Dune and like the sci-fi miniseries Dune, they made their their eyes into these like glowing blue like like lights. But in the book, it's like no, they're 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 just dark blue. Like it's not it's nothing like super <laughs> special. It's just like you've got you get dark blue eyes. Like that's it. <laughs> like it's not like glow in the dark like like you know laser beam special like kind of things but uh, it's kind of it's kind of funny but I don't know. <laughs> well.